What we're doing is comparing the lizards across different parts of the islands to try to understand why they look quite different in different places. Is that because the habitat is different or is that because of a different history of the islands? They're um, going to throw the water away because they want the um, bottle to make a trap. The idea is to chop the top of, but leave a little bit of a shoulder here. You want it to be reasonably high, even after you've finished cutting. And if you have a little bit of a shoulder, again, it'll decrease the chance that the lizards are going to shoot out of it like a cruise missile when you go near the traps, OK? So you just stick the knife in something like this. And, uh, yeah, just sort of take about a third or whatever of a tomato, give it a bit of a squeeze to get some juice out and chuck it into the bottom of the trap. Of tools. How absolutely splendid. <laughs> We've made a trap out of a big bottle of water, put some tomato in it, squidged it around get a bit. It all juicy, and we're waiting for further instruction of where to lay it and hopefully get some lizards in them. Yeah. I think we're going to lay them at the base of the wall because um, they live in the wall, so hopefully they're going to smell that, come out, get trapped in there, and we've got to somehow <laughs> stick our hand in and try and grab them out again. But it should be cool, we should be alright. Yeah, I know. If you get to the hospital. <laughs> and what we're studying is the, how the pa colour pattern, the sexual communication in the colour pattern varies from one habitat to another. So we're, these lizards, which is unusual for lizards, are vegetarian. So we're trapping them with tomato in plastic bottles. And um, then we're recording the, the colour pattern characters on them. And then they'll analyse those and they'll see how it varies in the different habitats that we find on the island. This is the other pattern class. You can see it's got these absolutely gorgeous big blue spots on the side of the shoulders here. And it's got very little in the way of reticulations on the back. We're counting the markings down the side and measuring the size by counting the scales. Um, but having some difficulties because they wriggle and the scales are really, really small. So yeah, we're, we're getting there slowly anyway. You can't understand uh, many aspects of biology being stuck in a lab. What's happening is happening in the field and you need to be in the field to see it and it gives you a better perspective on that side of empirical science than you'll get from just studying it remotely. I think it's better coming out and doing it for real because then you get to see see how big they are rather than just being shown a photo of them. And actually, like, cashels flying over, so you get to see the natural predators. Well, once we see the lizards in the other place, we'll get to see how the theory that we learn in class uh, actually applies to the real world. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's fairly important. OK, so any small ones or anything that's no longer needed can be let go, where you've, preferably where you found it.